This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector power button using Inkscape, where it appears as if uh, we have two different variations here, one where it's in the off position and the other where it's illuminated in the on position. So we'll go ahead and get started in Inkscape. And by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up the document. So we'll go to File, Document Properties, and uh, I'm going to set the display units to PX. And I'm going to turn off the show page border, and we can close out of that. And what we want to do now is go to View, make sure we have Custom selected. We'll zoom in at 1 to 1. And then we'll open up the uh, Align and Distribute menu with that button there. And we're going to want Last Selected Chosen from this dropdown. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we want to do is grab this image of this brushed steel that we're going to use as the background. And I'll have a link to that in the description of the video. So go ahead and grab that image. I'm just going to click and drag that into Inkscape. And it's going to ask if you want to embed or link it. I'm going to, I'm going to set it for uh, as uh, embed and go ahead and click OK. And there's our image. And we're going to design the buttons right on top of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a, the next thing I'm going to do is gra uh, grab the circles and ellipses tool and hold control and shift on the keyboard to create a perfectly round circle like that. And we want to make sure that this is black, or like straight black all the way, RGBA 000FF, just like that. We'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And what I'm going to do now is give this a uh, linear gradient by uh, coming up here to the fill tab and clicking on the button right here that says Linear Gradient. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this stop right here, and I'm going to bring the opacity of that stop all the way up, and I'm going to change it to 80% uh, gray. If you hover your cursor over the shade, it's the third shade in, it'll show you, there'll be a little graphic overlay that tells you which percentage it is. It's 80% uh, gray. Go ahead and click on that. And we end up with that right there. And we're going to use that as the backstop, so sort of like the back part of the button there. And then what I want to do is grab the uh, Select tool, and I want to click this button over here that says Rotate Selection 90 degrees clockwise. Just like that. So we have the lighter shade facing down and the darker shade facing up. And I'm actually going to turn off the snaps uh, where it says Enable Snap, and I'm going to turn that off for the, the duration of this tutorial. And once we've created this circle, I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I'm going to turn that duplicated copy white. And I'm going to lower that one step so it goes beneath the black circle that we just created. And then I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this up maybe about that much. And then what I'll do is I'll give this a linear gradient by clicking the button that says Linear Gradient. And uh, then I'm going to rotate this around 90 degrees counterclockwise. So go ahead and click that. And then I'm going to grab the gradient tool, and I'm just going to hold control and take this top node and bring this down about this far. Then I'll take this node down here. You know what? We'll leave that node as it is. We'll go back to the select tool, and we'll bring the opacity of the entire thing down a little bit, maybe about, maybe about that much like that. And that's going to act sort of like a, we're going to act sort of as like a, a bevel going around the outside edge of the button, like you see here. So the next step would be to grab our uh, black and gray circle right here. And we're going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift. I'm actually going to flip this vertically. Click the button that says Flip Selected Objects Vertically. Hold Control and Shift and scale it down about that much. Maybe about that much, like uh, right there. And then I'll turn this black. And I'm going to blur this where it says Blur right here. I'm going to click on this 0.0, .0 and I'm going to... Uh, change that to a two-point blur. So I'll hit two and hit enter and give that a two-point blur. And I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger, just holding control and shift to scale it up. And then I'll click on this other circle right beneath it, the one we originally created. Duplicate that by hitting control D. Then we could hold control and shift and scale that down, maybe about that much like that. And I'm going to take this circle, and I'm going to make this 90% gray. And then I'll grab the, uh, I'll go over here where it says radial gradient. I'll click on that to give it a radial gradient. And I'll go back to the gradient tool. And I'm going to click on this outer stop right here. And I'm going to make this 80% um, gray. 
And I'm going to take this center node right here. I'm going to hold control and just click and drag this straight up and out of vision, out of the view, outside of that circle right there. And I'm going to hold control and shift and take this node and scale that up like that. So we end up with a, a gradient where it's darker up here, but slightly lighter down here. Kind of like you see here in the thumbnail. And um, as a matter of fact, we might want to click on that center node and make that a little darker. Maybe something like that. That should be pretty good. We'll go ahead and grab the select tool. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate that circle by hitting Control D. And I'll flip that vertically with the button that says flip selected objects vertically and hold Control and Shift and scale that down. Maybe about that much. And you know what? I'm gonna click the circle beneath that. I'm gonna flip that one vertically and then come back to this one over here, this new one, and then flip that vertically. That's the way it should be. That's the proper order right there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'm gonna take this, this little white circle that we created earlier, and I'm gonna duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and scale that down so it's just a little bit bigger than our smallest circle there. And I'll lower that one step so it goes right beneath it. I'm gonna bring that down a little more. And what I want to do now is flip that vertically by clicking the button over here that says Flip Selected Objects Vertically. Just like that. And we can click off of the, uh, the graphic to deselect everything and you'll see how things are starting to come along here. So the next step would be to create the power button going along the inside. And depending on how big or small th these things have turned out for you, you might want to just adjust some of the sizes. Uh, like I'm going to make, I'm going to click on just this, these segments in here. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger like that, that's pretty good. And I'll take these circles over here, I'll make them a little smaller. You can adjust the sizes as you see fit. And I think that's pretty good right there. I'm gonna leave that just as it is. And what I'm gonna do now is create the power button. So I'm gonna click on this circle here in the middle and I'll hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate that. And I'm gonna hold Shift and, and click on like a, a light shade of gray, maybe like almost like a white to give that a white outline. And then I'll click on the X here on the left to get rid of the fill color. And up here where it says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion, make sure you have that turned off. And once we've done that, we can hold Control and Shift and just scale that down maybe about that much. And I'm actually gonna make that a little thicker. I'm gonna come over to the Stroke Style tab. I'm gonna change this to Pixels. And I'll make this maybe uh, 15, see how that looks. That's pretty good. We can go ahead and hit um, path, stroke to path to finalize that. And then we got to create the uh, a little rectangle to put here in the middle for the power button. So we'll grab the squares and rectangles tool. Go ahead and create a rectangle. Uh, I'm going to make that white. I'm going to get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking the X. And I'll go back to the select tool. And we want to make sure the width of this is the same width that we used for this circle over here, which I believe was... 15 so let me get rid of the stroke uh, make click on this rectangle make it uh, the width be 15 put that right in the center I'm gonna bring the opacity of that all the way up I'm gonna bring that down I'm gonna position this right about here like that I'll hold shift click on the circle and just make sure it's centered on the vertical axis, then click off of it to deselect everything. And what we want to do now is take this rectangle that we just created and duplicate that by hitting Control D. And let's make that a shade of dark gray, something that matches the button. And we'll just make that a little wider on each side. Pull out those arrows. Maybe I'll zoom in so you can see a little better. Make it a little wider on each side. Lower it one step so it goes beneath the red, uh, I mean the uh, white rectangle. And hold Shift and click the circle and make sure it's centered on the vertical axis and click off it to deselect everything. And if you want, you could zoom in just to get a preview of how it'll look. Personally, I don't like um, that there's not enough space in there. So I'm gonna make this a little wider, make that a little wider. And again, hold shift, click the circle and center it up. Let me zoom out a little bit just to get a better vantage point. And I'd say that looks pretty good right there. So what I'll do now is I'll take this rectangle, hold shift, click on the circle and go to path difference. And I'll maybe even take this rectangle and hold control and bring that down a little bit like that. And that looks pretty good. 
And once we've done that, we can click on this uh, rectangle, hold shift, click on the white circle and unify them both together by going to path union. And now we just want to make this uh, a solid fill as I did here, because this is supposed to represent the button being in the off position. So uh, what I'll do is I'll grab the dropper tool and I'll just uh, grab a uh, sample from the button beneath it. Then I'll go back to the fill tab and just make that a slightly bit darker. And to do that, I'm, I'm under the HSL tab and using the L row and sliding that to the left a little bit. Maybe that much looks pretty good. We'll go back to the select tool, click off of that to deselect it. Press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And we now have the button that's the, the power button that's uh, supposed to be turned off. We're just going to create the turned on variation now. So um, what I'll do is I'll click and drag over all of that. Bring this off to the side here. I'll duplicate all of that by hitting control D. Then I'll hold control and click and drag this to the right like that and click off it to deselect everything. And to illuminate this button, I'm just going to grab this black this black circle that we blurred earlier. I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna make that a shade of light blue, something like this, 00CCFF. And I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift and scale that down a little bit. I don't want that to be too big. And I'm actually gonna, if you, if you look closely here, you'll notice it's a gradient from blue to green. So that's what, I, what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna give this a linear gradient by clicking on the button that says linear gradient. And then I'm going to Grab the gradient tool, click on this stop over here to the right, bring the opacity all the way up, and choose a shade of green, maybe something over here. That's pretty good. Bring this up to the top, take this blue, bring this to the bottom, hold control to lock it to the vertical axis like that. And now we can go back to the select tool and click on the power button, and we can give that a linear gradient as well and just choose that shade, that gradient we just created. Go to the gradient tool, take the blue stop and put it at the bottom and the green stop and put it up top while holding control to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. Go back to the select tool and I'd say it's pretty good. It's almost done. The only thing I would do differently is maybe adjust this a little bit like this button right here. If we go to the gradient tool, uh, I click on this middle stop here, maybe make that a little bit darker. That's pretty good. And we'll have to do the same thing to this button over here. Click on that. Make that a little bit darker. And to go back to the select tool. And I'd say that looks pretty good. And with that, we are finished with our uh, vector power button using Inkscape. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.